So we've got Gerhard Steidel and Robert Polidori, one of the most leading architectural photographers of our time. And they're gonna talk about book publishing versus kind of digital obsession with books and how the Amazon world has taken over. So Robert is gonna talk about architectural photography, space, and how somebody can be very obsessive with what they photograph in terms of buildings and streets and architecture, to both of them. It's an unlikely threesome with me here. So, I think the first question is really to Gerhard. Do you have nightmares about your job in this day and age? Mm, no, not at all. Uh, because, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm overseeing everything, what happens in our buildings, and uh, I start up very early in the morning, regularly at 4.30. And then I'm playing all the day like a child uh, in the sandbox, uh, doing just the things I want. And uh, I am every two hours surprised uh, that some good results coming up. And uh, in the evening I'm tired and I go to bed. And next day the same thing starts. That means, you know, um, I'm, when, when I'm working on books, uh, I never have a plan. Uh, for example, I like it best really when an artist is coming up to my library and we sit together, have just materials on the desk and then dreaming about the book. So my question always to an artist when Polidori first comes to Göttingen, uh, I asked him, okay, what do you want to do? And we had no idea, is it a large book, is it a small book, is it landscape or is it horizontal, is it black and white or color? And then we spread out photos on the table uh, and uh, just uh, had a, we did daydreaming and at the end, uh, step by step, uh, it, moves, it turns out in a really classical book, what was uh, the Havana book uh, I did years ago with Robert, and now I think it is in his 50,000 copies. Or so. How did you meet? What was the connection? How did you, you know, I forgot. In fact, I thought that <coughs> that was going to come up, that question. Oh, and do I thought, tell us. Was it Match.com? No. no, it was no dot com thing. Was, uh, do you remember? No. I re I th it was in 2000, yeah. I think. I remember meeting you in the, the Pace Galleries oh, uh, uh, um, uh, warehouse or something. Could be. Yes. I, so I don't look back. Like you have known each other a long time. Yeah, in other I, words. I do remember. I did want to do the Havana book. Uh, there was another German publisher who. Uh, approached me, but which I won't mention the name here, but um, they wanted money up front, and I didn't have it. And Gerd said, well, I didn't need to do that. He said, just lend me some uh, not so great uh, prints, and I'll make you a, a, a suggestion. And, and he took those back to Germany, and about three months later, he was back in New York, and he actually had a, he scanned those eight by 10 prints, and you actually print, lithographically printed four or five images in the format of the book that you had in mind. And that impressed me. Um, so. Yeah, uh, uh, I was very surprised when I started my collaboration with Polidori uh, that I found out uh, he's a very good technician. And uh, so I learned uh, that he was working at a lab guy in New York. And, you know, uh, when, when you have the knowledge of uh, the traditional darkroom to work uh, with chemicals and the chemical analog process, you understand much better uh, the the digital world of Photoshop, because uh, Photoshop is just uh, uh, the electronic version of the darkroom. And uh, I was very impressed uh, about his knowledge, and uh, actually I have to say, uh, from him and uh, from most of uh, the artists who are coming to my place, uh, we are learning a lot and we are giving back a lot. So at the end it is a collaboration uh, on, uh, on a very high level, uh, which leads at the end uh, in in a book. Interesting is when we are doing books by today um, that uh, all the work up front, so all the pre-press process, or let's say from, from the design process up to the 
up to the make up to uh, making the plates, the printing plates, plates. Everything is digital, and at the very end, it, it turns out into analog because you have a press with uh, uh, rolling cylinders. Uh, you have wet ink in the boxes, and you are going with wet ink onto the paper. And what is surprising for me is that uh, you you have. A, when, when you are doing the proofs of the photography and you have them on the desk and it, it is uh, highly processed uh, with uh, inkjet printers, they are looking very good, but it looks much better when the wet ink, the high density ink, is on the paper. It, is, uh, it, 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 it gives really the final uh, finish to the photography. But when you talk about collaborations and, of course, the process, do you think about the customer slash the viewer or the reader in mind, or do you think about your own principal pleasures? How no, does it work? No, I never... I, I, I'm, when, when I'm working on a book... Um, as a publisher, and, As yeah. a publisher, and I think I can speak also for most of my artists, uh, we are never looking uh, if this book is successful or if it finds a market or it finds a customer who will buy it. You know, uh, we are doing it just for us. And uh, it is... Um, mm, uh, when I'm working with an artist, I feel like a student. Uh, I want to learn, I want to understand, and as uh, the artist uh, wants me to make a good job, uh, he will give me serious answers to my stupidest questions. And uh, so uh, that makes me understand his work, and I can add on with my technology and with my technical know-how uh, that what the artist not has. So my position in the publishing is um, I'm a student, I want to learn, I want to release something, what uh, makes me happy, what makes me feel good, and uh, I want to fulfill the artist vision. And so in other words, what you're doing is very different to the digital world because that's a very commercially motivated yeah. world. Yeah, I'm not interested in any marketing. You know, uh, even if a book does not sell at the end, I'm happy with it, as it when it is as good as I could make it. Uh, it is the the money matters are not interesting me at all. And uh, thanks God, uh, there was always enough money coming in um, that I have never calculated a book project. I'm not sitting down and mm -hmm. uh, making a list what costs paper and what is printing and what is binding and so on. And but but is it getting back. more and more difficult as the digital age is upon us? No, more not, f not, not no? for me and not for us. What uh, about you, Robert? I'm sorry. I have my own. As a, as a uh, photographer. Just, uh, just one Wait. thing okay. at the end of uh, this uh, section. You know, I learned what, regarding money matters, I learned mm. from Karl Lagerfeld uh, mm. that you have to throw out money on top of your building, onto the street, and then it tumbles downstairs into the entrance later on back. So yeah. okay. that's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I have another parallel version of yes. that. Yes, yes. Um, in what sense? What do well, you mean, uh, parallel? Like in, I would say that um, I made three books prior to when the, uh, the, the books that I've done with Gerhard. Yes. And I remember telling Gerhard one day that if you try to make a book, um, w we're trying to, um, like imagining your public, and you want to please these people, and then this might please this, and then so forth, so on, you end up pleasing no one. Okay? And look, uh, oh, so the book should be made in such a way that it, uh, it has to please, uh, yeah, yourself. However, I don't make books just for myself. I want to communicate, okay? Like a lot of artists say, well, I just do this for myself. I, I'm not a photographer just for myself. I want to like relate. I want to show to other people, do you see what I see, okay? So uh, I do have an, an imaginary end perceiver in mind. Um, but I don't pander to any subgroup of an audience trying to give them bait so they buy the book. I think the audience, they're hip to that and they won't buy the book. It, it, it goes against you. You but follow my, yes, what I'm trying to say? Yes, okay. yes. But aren't you contradicting yourself? <coughs> uh, yeah. Because as an artist, you need to make a living. 
And oh, yeah, but I don't you, make money from books. Well, what do you make money from? Uh, selling art. May it last. I, I wake up every morning. Well, these so people do come you do to the their art senses. Then? Who needs to buy these expensive colored pieces of paper? But hey, it makes me live. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh. Good. <coughs> okay, but well, I didn't think that was going to be the popular thing. <laughs> but do you think, I mean, your principal work, if I'm not wrong, is photography. It's, yes. it's capturing yes. spaces. Yes. Oh, and, let me just say one yeah. thing, too. You know, it's true. It's even written there. Architectural photography. Yeah. I cringe whenever I see that. But, you know, hey, I admit that I shoot buildings. Okay, so it's true. <laughs> but, no, but architectural photography is about trying to show a, a building like a product. Mm -hmm. Mostly new, I guess. I'm interested in how society uses a building, okay? Uh, like earlier, we talked about, uh, in the time, it was about the Bohemians and the hippies. And then I used to read, I never read magazines, but I used to read, maybe you know this, the, um, the Whole Earth Catalog. I used to read the book reviews. And there was a book in there called The Art of Memory by Francis Yates about ancient memory systems based on empty rooms. I said, really? <laughs> I, I went out and bought that book, and then it, and it was just an amazing, it was a life changer for me. Okay, so I photograph spaces as uh, to find traces of, of what Jung would call their super egos. In other words, portraits of people without them. Right, but you said See, you like so to do that because you want to connect communicate I, with the people, I, right? Because um, so I'm looking for psychological portraits of rooms. Okay? I'm looking for traces of time. And how do you choose? Because you know, we were having a dialogue about Calcutta the other day. Yeah. So well, I, are there I, we're having cities? a because I'm trying to get there. Yeah. And, I, and then when you told me you were from there, I, I had no idea with a first name like Pablo that mm. you would be from India. Mm. I've been shooting mostly in, in Mumbai, which is quite expensive. Yes. And they told me, oh, it's cheaper in Calcutta. Oh, it's not. Oh, no, it's not. It's not. Too it's bad. Not. It's, uh, it's, it's a not. perception, and as oh, in yeah. all perceptions okay. are wrong. But I think going back to... Your, your, your work, you know, you said you want to communicate with the public. That's, that's one of the... Well, I want to transmit something. So when you know. you're taking photographs, the psychological part of this, you know, spaces, are you telling the people in those cities how those places really are? Mm. Are you trying to tell them that they don't know, even though they're from those places? Uh, I don't try to tell any... Uh, well, they would be the last who I would try to tell anything to, but uh, no, I'm not trying to tell. I'm trying to share... Like I said, do you see what I see? Um, and um, look, I love looking at phenomena, mm -hmm. okay? But uh, working like I, like after all, photography is an um, industrial art probably at its end. It's an expensive habit, okay? I could just go look for free, okay? Uh, so... Um, but how, how do you choose your places? So, for example, when you and Gerhard uh, uh, the get ones together, that, that for me that I feel... But does he tell you, or oh, go and shoot Kuwait for me? Oh, he, well, he, he, him, uh, since we like Marx a little bit, he wanted, we were supposed to do this book because we like the Beatles and stuff, so we're going to do <laughs> a, a, a back in the USSR, but I can't go there because like, the food's so bad. So, um, um, so we, we did dream about this book, but Gerhard doesn't tell me anything. Gerhard, what he... He's done three things for me. One is that, unlike other publishers, he owns his means of production. That is a rarity, and it's a great thing. And also, he's clever. He knows how to keep his empire going through other jobs, which you know he can talk, talk about. Um, and because of that, he allows himself to lose money in photo books. Okay, uh, uh, and, um, and the great thing about having an integrated um, production system is that most publishers in the world, okay, they have an office where people wear nice clothes and they sit in front of their IMAX or whatever, and then, okay, and they take a long time to decide the book, and then they look for years for co-publishing deal because uh, and then okay then they'll make the maquette that will take forever it's like a, a process like committee I hate 
process making by committee because it ends up being no one's taste. Okay? Two, then they'll send out the, the scans to be made somewhere. No, no. Then, okay. Send things uh, to my bed. Uh, okay. And then uh, they'll do uh, the, 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 um, those plates in another place. Then it's printed in, a, you know, nothing matches. And it's just segmentation, and it just leads to a watered down, both emotional um, way of making the book, and then in the in in the, in distancing. They're all distancing strategies. But Gerhard, I have you know how to make a book with title. You made a short film. Is it a short film? Or is it quite a long film. It's about eight minutes. Ninety minutes. Ninety minutes. And why, why did you do it? Why? It came out in 2010? Yeah. Why? Because uh, many publishers don't do that, especially yeah. independent ones. They don't do kind of a, a reality TV version of what they are doing every day from all the writers and authors you work with. You went to LA, you, you kind of had the cameras following you. Why? Uh, but the, um, it was an idea from a German cultural channel called uh, uh, Three Set. And uh, they, they had quite a comfortable budget uh, to um, send uh, three uh, film makers together with me around the world for one and a half year. And um, following that, uh, they got really a view into the, uh, into the making of a book. And uh, I'm interested that uh, my knowledge is uh, transmitted to other countries, to other people, to young people who have a vision to print books, to publish books, and to live with books. And I don't want to hide my knowledge. It's really uh, something But it's interesting I want because you're away. doing it at an age where the opposite is happening. More and more people are doing online magazines, uh, iPad magazines. There's a magazine called Post, which is the first iPad magazine in the world. There's more, you know, Condé Nast has gone completely digital now. Any magazine you want, you can buy it online on an iPad, on an iPhone. So are you trying to convert those who are already converted to a digital age? Or? You, you know, 20 years ago, I was always dreaming uh, that um, to my place, somebody is coming uh, and... Uh, wants to learn printing, really on press, yeah, working on press. And my dream was that this is a young man or a woman, uh, highly educated, uh, maybe with a doctor's degree, and uh, so with a cultural background and uh, with a visual educating, because I thought such a person must be perfect on press. And it, of course it was impossible, you know, those... At, at those days, it, it, it was a dirty job, and most of the printing stuff was just commercial, and uh, the, the photo book as we have it today was simply not existing. But uh, today it has changed. There are really, from all over the world, uh, we have requests from young people, 24, 27 years old, who are just ready with their studies, and they say, okay, we want to come to your place and to work for three, five years with you to learn and then go back to my country, to Australia, to India, uh, to South America, and build up there a business. Last well, week, publishing I, business, create publishing their business. print. Yeah. Last right. week I had uh, from a 24 uh, years old man uh, from China an email, and uh, the last sentence in his uh, email was, uh, I want to become the Steidel of China. I was very proud. <laughs> but um, yeah. just one thing I wanted to correct Robert. Robert yeah. said um, that uh, I have um, I have the backgrounds, uh, the financial backgrounds uh, that I uh, can live with the fact that I'm losing money with photo books. Um, it is not totally true. So of course, <laughs> there are yes. there are there are photo books which really make a profit. You know, we have the. Does he? Have the, what about his books? Do they make a make, profit? Make profit. They make do. Profit, I'm yeah. not. I'm serious. You know, the, uh, when 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 we are ready with the book, he always <laughs> asks me, uh, "Do you make profit with my books?" And then I say yes, and then he's very happy and he's jumping and laughing. And yeah, so, because okay, we don't get to I do another but one. If right? his don't make a profit. 
He can well, give you the phone harder. number of this title of China. Yeah. They will buy your books in... But yeah. you know, um, uh, of course, I had some good luck. Uh, we yes. have the world rights in uh, the works of Robert Frank, and from the Americans we sell every year between 50 and 70,000 books, every year. Yeah. And you hold and the rights to Gunter Grass? One yes, of the, the yeah. world rights of Gunter Grass. Uh, from the Tin Drum we sell every year in Germany, so two, three hundred thousand. All Chanel books, you do them? All Lagerfeld's books? Uh, Chanel is not doing books. Chanel is doing catalogs. Catalogs. I'm doing the catalogs for Chanel. Yes, and yes, I'm. Yes. Uh, but that's good business. Yeah, that's a good yes. job. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, uh, it is it is quite comfortable because uh, I'm just working with Karl Lagerfeld. Uh, he is an artist, as Robert Polidori is an artist. He they are. Lagerfeld, Polidori, and others, they are delivering stuff to me, and we develop something. The comfortable thing is with, uh, with Chanel uh, that uh, we have a nice open budget and a carte blanche. Uh, we can do what the we want. The black jacket, uh, the, the kind of memorabilia, you did that as well. The yes. One that was mm -hmm. in Berlin. When yeah. was it? Recently? Just now. It's just open now. Just now. Mm. Um, and do you find companies such as Amazon or Facebook coming to you saying, could, you, could we collaborate? with a question mark, which might make you feel quite frightened. What does that mean? Uh, you know, do you have those digital powerhouses coming Questions to you? like this do not come on my desk because I'm simply not interested. So uh, thanks God why I have people, interested? they filter it but, out. But why? Is it I'm not interested to collaborate. I'm what about after you're gone, you know, in the next 50 years? Who's going to take over? I Stiedel? hope that I have teached enough young people who take over, and that's nobody from my family, and that's nobody with whom I have a uh, um, uh, with whom I have a business relationship. It is just someone who is then working for me. And the moment I go into my grave, I give the key to this guy and say, "Go on." And <laughs> then, Robert. good luck. So, yeah. so, but you would never, you would never then. But what I'm asking specifically is that you do not, not for you, I know, but in terms of Steidel's future, you do not see it going into a digital movement. No, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, I was thinking, okay, shall I make electronic book, electronic books? Because uh, all the stuff, as I said, uh, is digitally available. You just press a button, you have a PDF, send it around the world, and make some extra money. Uh, but then I decided it is not. Uh, that's not really good. Um, I want to be the analog man. Yes, and I'm. Do I don't do digital books. You know, there was an interesting thing. Uh, Ten days ago, I was working with an American artist, um, David Meisel, um, and um, he was since ten years on my waiting list uh, to make a book with him. And then he was coming to Göttingen, and we worked and we worked, and on a certain day, uh, he was very late in the evening coming into my office, and I was just writing uh, an email on my uh, iPad. And he said, What's, what are you doing there? That's not Steidel. Yeah. And so th then I understood that people connect me yeah, really so with, the an with the yeah. analog world. And, and uh, you have an iPhone as well, so you're all backed up. Yeah, but I so don't. So you do use. I, do, I, yeah. I, I hide it. Because mm. mm. uh, the first time we got in touch, I mm. called, texted him um, on iPhone. Robert, here's a man, your publisher, your, your friend, who is kind of a strange love-head relationship with the digital world. But you, do you really have a strong passion for what's happening digitally around... Because they, they control our spaces now. Okay, you want, I'll answer that. Yeah. My world with the digital comes in two phases. Um, in 1984, I bought um, a second-hand Apple SE30 computer. And I became addicted to it for three months. I even learned to uh, kind of program on HyperCard. And, and all my friends said, you're turning into an, a nerd. And I totally went through this, and I came out the, the other side, and I said, well, OK, that was interesting. I never thought about making images with it. But you know, um, I type. I can't even read my own handwriting, so typing, even though I don't, I never, like Richard, I didn't learn how to type, but I learned it's easier to correct than doing that whiteout. So um, I used it for, as a writing aid and orga organizational aid. And then, this, I sort of left it at that. Mm -hmm. I always shot in sheet film, 
You know, I, uh, I started in four by five. Well, prior to that in medium format because I would always buy the formats that were no longer uh, hip. So when everybody moved to those 35 millimeter uh, Nikons, I, I bought up all those 120 format cameras because they, they were great lenses and it was better resolution and it was a lot cheaper. Um, okay, and then in 92, I was sent to Libya to shoot the um, archi architectural, um, archeological sites. And I spent four months in Libya and um, and I have great kidnap stories too. And I, I, and, and, but I'll tell you the punchline of one that uh, um, they wrote on my paper. What is the Department of Antiquities, or Ministry, Ministry of Antiquities? Why do they give authorizations for photography without asking our opinion first? We found him taking pictures near our meeting house, so we took him signed the people okay oh, but, wow. but the people they didn't know who i was because i didn't have my passport and then they drove around a lot and then and then there was like um a, um a young soldier and when you really scared out of your mind you understand immediately foreign languages he said where's his passport so we don't have it well, a prisoner with no passport is valueless you have to bring him back to where you found him and see who his friends are okay so anyway um back to libya it's so dry there that just Strange changing true, yeah, yeah to to um um, to change the sheet films uh, in the in the ectochrome, which is an acetate base, it made all of these statics. When we developed the film, there's like these tiny little blue, um, uh, like like lightning uh, little marks, and I was like so disappointed. And then it was then that the guy from Kodak who had sponsored this whole uh, ec um, expedition says, well, we'll have to get the stuff scanned and retouched. And I said, uh, what's that? He says, well, in, those t in 92, uh, and I was living in Paris then, like scanners were huge things by Siemens, and like a retouch thing was like, it's as wide as that whole setup there. And it cost hundreds and maybe millions of francs in those years okay so then they wouldn't even let me close to the machinery then i saw oh this is how you do it with with photoshop and i was um i realized that photoshop had um power over color that no analog uh filtration ever had prior because i had spent maybe two years, like 79 to 81, learning traditional color printing, and I hated it. It's not fun being a chemist. Plus, I failed chemistry. Well, I actually got a D because I flirted with the teacher, but I should have failed that class. I'm really bad at chemistry. And I hate the smell, I hate the whole thing. And, um, but I learned certain things about color, and I found that Photoshop was a great tool. And then I, later, I acquired my own scanners, and I realized that, um, so I guess... Would you do a book uh, digitally? Right, 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 let yeah. me just uh, so I finish I this. That, I thought you could have a question. That, yeah, yes. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll speed it up. Yeah. That, um, I came at a development in photography that was a hybrid between analog and digital, okay? I like analog original, I like film, even in audio recordings. I like, um, I like analog um, originals. You know, you can't take the digital, you can't take, make a, an analog copy of an analog copy of an analog copy looks bad. That's the best thing about the digitals, the reproducibility, but it, its capture is brittle, it's not so great. Um, so, like I said, I use the hybrid, and I wanna, uh, and there's another thing I like to, to talk about, what I think are the social implications or habit implications, but maybe you want to shut me up now and no, ask no, me another no. question. But my question, yeah. no, I, you know, you, uh, would you do a 
uh, let's forget title for a yeah. second. If let's say somebody else came to you and said, oh, here's half a million, you know, just do a web photography project for uh, us. Would I mean, you do it? No. Digital. Well, I'd, I'd find a way to count to take the if half the a million. If the president of Azerbaijan's it. daughter, <coughs> yeah. if the president of Azerbaijan's daughter calls you saying, oh, you know, we are buying culture. Can you come and do a web project for our museums? Would you do it? Only digital. Mm -hmm. And he has two million and we'll give you another half a million next year. Uh, I'd, the nine out of 10, no. I mean, what do you mean nine out of well, 10? Well, nine chances out of 10, I'd say no. Right, okay. but there is still a chance. It depends what how I, I, yeah. I, The reason I mean, I'm being you know, difficult be, is that, uh, would, so there is still a part of you that might do a digital project, a digital collaboration. Look, I, I, like I said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a purist guy, Right. okay? Right. Uh, uh, I use the best of whatever I can get. Right. Okay, and I think <coughs> sometimes it's mix and match. Okay, but not, now I like, to tell, you, I like to tell you yeah, the same one story. Like I have a, um, a German friend photographer, colleague who I respect a lot, Harf, who used to um, make money by um, giving photo classes on luxury liner boats for the elderly <laughs> golden age people. Okay, so and he and he started in the analog times where they get a thirty-five millimeter camera and they take pictures on the boat, then they learn to develop the, the film, then they learn to make the contact sheets, then they learn to print it. And all this would take maybe by the end of the cruise, seven, eight days, they'd have four or five photos that they're proud of and that they would show the class, maybe a class of eight or 10. Okay, then came the digital. Um, so they go, and they take hundreds of pictures in the boat because it costs nothing to click. And then they don't have to develop anything. Uh, they don't even make prints. Sometimes maybe they'll do an inkjet thing, but now they have the projectors. So they do the presentation and they don't really know how to edit. So let's just say they do 150 photos, 10 seconds each, 1500 seconds. What are we in minutes here? Are we over 20 minutes? Um, and then the next person, okay? By the time you've hit 50 minutes of the same boring photos of the boat, okay? The fourth person doesn't even want to go show their photos because they're all the same and you don't, you don't look at it anymore. And so what happens is that They'll never look at those photos again. <laughs> They'll never take another cruise again. Because what have they learned? That everybody's experience is banal and the same. So to take, when, when it's cheap to take something, what it means is when you take the picture, it's to expurgate it out of your life. It's something you no longer need to do. Okay, so it's to cut out experience that you don't have to do again. Where with the analog, it was an ideal, a love that you treasured. It's also based on cost. In film, it's like front-loaded. It costs you to click, it costs you to develop, it costs you to make the print, but it costs you nothing to save. In digital, it costs you nothing to click. It costs you time in editing. It costs you time and money in constant st storage and re-storage data transfers. Like, you know, I have the, in the loft that I just sold, the, the most expensive room is maybe 50, it's five by eight feet, 40 square feet air conditioned server room that's, that I have $200,000 in there just for storing digital. Okay, check that out. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and they're constantly, you know, making new um, gauges or new standards. So you have to constantly recode and retransfer. So what, what do you want to do after a while? Just give up. So that's, it goes in this black hole of forgetting. See, that's why I say... That's a black hole in Calcutta, do you know that? Oh, yeah, no. The black hole of Calcutta. Really? Yeah. yeah okay. Many British were killed there. Okay. Yeah. 
All right. I was speaking metaphorically of a black hole of, of forgetful, of, of where it takes the need, no, the desire of memory away. Okay, so the thing about the internet is you can go on all those things. You can know like a tiny bit about all sorts of stuff, but, and then you think you know it. Maybe you don't. Okay, so that's what I have to say. So that's what people have to be uh, aware of about um, that, uh, the psychological aspects of using these, so, these um, cybernetic tools. I could ask you yeah. both of you one question okay. each. Starting with you and then yeah. same question. Do you think the internet has been the best thing that's happened to us in terms of culture in the last 10 years? Me? No. no? It's, it's good though. But not, uh, not one of the best. Not one of the best. No, you know what I think is the greatest? In very okay. few words though. Okay. I, think I don't want to go to Libya okay. again. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, let's see how long this will be a fad. I think it'll always stay. You think it's a fad? Yeah, partly. Really? Yes. You don't think it's been a force for good? It's opened up. I mean, if you talk about Libya, look, it changed the face of Libya in the last 10 months, 12 months. Syria, the same. It's changing the way we uh, uh, live. Look, it's no? a tool. It oh. changed the architectural psyche of, a, of, of huma humanity, you don't think? Um, what I see throughout the world, even in the Arabic nations or Muslim nations, is that women take more and more power. I see that's, that's a big change. That's, women uh, take money. Yeah. Like I see that. I would have never predicted that. What and about and you? It's yeah. okay. I mean, just saying, you know, like I'm more surprised about that. But that's a good thing, right? Yeah, it's a good thing, I guess. Uh, you guess. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yes. I, but I think that's due, see, to the end of, we're, we're living at the end of the industrial age. Yes. yes. Okay, and, it, and that was man's big idea, and it's not working out. So it's like, it's natural that the women say, well, I say, we told you so. Gerhard, do you think internet has been, I, forget the publishing area, just I'm talking about non-publishing. In terms of non-publishing, do you think the internet has been a great force in the last 10, 15 to 20 years for our generation, culturally? My, my answer is a quote from Robert Polidori. Uh -huh. yeah. Analog is made to remember, digital is made to forget. But sometimes mm -hmm. forgetting is necessary, okay? <laughs> Okay. 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 So now it's time for questions. Okay. So I need those black ladies. Where are they? There you are. So <coughs> would, do we only have one of you? Or? Oh, both of you. And you both have microphones this time. Great. So questions. Anybody's got a question? Don't be shy. Question? Yes? The gentleman there in glasses. If you, uh, yeah. Thanks. I have a question for Mr. Steidel. Um, who, what other photographers are very familiar or very interested in working in the fashion that you work, other than Mr. Polidori? Mm -hmm. You know, there, uh, for me, there are uh, several categories. Of course, there are the slow working photographers which, who are going out into the world with a large format camera and taking home a few photos. So it takes endless to make a book, uh, but at the end it is always uh, a, a surprising book and an object which will last forever. Then uh, there are photographers who are doing this thing, um, uh, working with large format and digital, and uh, both things are surprising if you are a master on this, like uh, Joel Sternfeld, for example. So he's doing photos with his iPhone, and he's doing photos with uh, color ten. negative yeah. 8 by 10. Um, and uh, Robert Frank, still working just uh, with a 35 millimeter camera and with Polaroids. You mentioned David Mizell. Yeah. Is he one of those? Yes, he's one of those. Uh, you know, um, uh, every 
every photographer who has a passion has also a lot to tell. And uh, I, I found out it is very surprising that uh, he rents, uh, for example, a, a small uh, airplane flying himself uh, up into the sky and then doing the... The, he bought a, uh, he constructed a special equipment for it, uh, for uh, this plane uh, to make uh, shots uh, from the earth and uh, found out uh, the, the real ecological disasters which are hidden and you know coming back then with the results to my place and making a book which is a document how we destroy our our basics and how we destroy our future. Uh, this is really something uh, worth to work for. And, uh, but, you know, I, I'm also very eager to work with uh, those photographers who are in the fashion uh, business and uh, where uh, time is money and you have to be ready after five hours. It is, you know, everything is an experience and I cannot really say uh, one is better and one is worst. Uh, so I don't want to miss, uh, I don't want you to don't miss want to make anything about that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, you. the lady here, the blonde lady here. Hold, hold on one second. She'll just be two more minutes. <laughs> there, there she is. <coughs> My, my question is for Robert Polidori. I was curious, when you conceive of a project from the beginning, do you think of it as a book, or do you think of it, I mean, as, as a photographer, because I've seen your work, you know, in galleries and in The New Yorker and, and in books, I'm curious if when you start something out as an artist, as a photographer, are you already thinking of it as a book in the end? Um, 25 years ago, no. <laughs> now, maybe more, yes. <laughs> Though not everything that I, subject that I treat, do I think is worthy of a book. You know, so not all phenomena. Is a, um, look, I love making books. Because, um, you know, I really started out as, I wanted to be a filmmaker. I started out in film. Uh, and I think of a book as like... Uh, well, it's pre-cinematic form in a way, though. You know, it's, it's some hard binary. There's usually two pages, and it, this, the the tempo of the se of the sequencing is picked by the viewer. This, but you know, I don't want to take that analogy t too far. But um, I like the telling of a story or or going from one state to another. Uh, with the book form, okay? The book form has its limitations, like it can't be as big as the prints in the gallery where I can show more detail and stuff. So it's, however, and it's a more democratic form. It's like you, you can get a lot of pictures for maybe $100. Mm. And maybe you don't even have to buy the book. You can just look at it for free. Okay, that's possible too. Um, so it's a way to, to share stuff. Okay, but do I always, for example, I'm doing a book now that I never thought would be a book, okay? Uh, for example, when uh, through the 90s, uh, the, the 70s, 80s, and 90s, I used to location scout with a medium format camera. I took a lot of portraits of people and children and in a lot of the countries of the so-called Arab Spring, like uh, Yemen, uh, Syria, Leb Lebanon after the war, uh, I said Syria, uh, Egypt, Libya, okay. Um, and, and I realized these were the children who made the revolutions now, okay? And, I, and what do I see about them? How can I... Why did I take the pictures of them then? Because I knew they were different from their parents. And why? Because they grew up watching television. I can see it in the way that they look at you. Um, so, uh, and thanks for letting me do that book because I don't think that book will be so popular. Like, why are you doing this? But I wanted to get that out and Gerd would let me do it. Thank you. Uh, uh, or another publisher would say no, by the way. But that's, that's the case of a book that you, you saw it as a book. After the fact. After the fact. Yes. So, I mean, to, to make a book out of a project, then you necessarily need to shoot a certain number. I mean, it needs to be a, a pretty big project, right? So, like, let's say you were going to photograph in, 
I, I don't know. I don't know what you're okay, working on Okay, let me tell now. you this. For example, like um, Chernobyl, I was there. I did that book. I was there a week, but I shot it in five days. I want to go back maybe next year or in two years. Uh, but uh, like in Versailles, I started in 83. How many years is that? Like past, it's getting on 30 soon. I, and when I started that, I didn't think it would take me 30 years. So I don't really, um, uh, it depends. Every project is different. And like Gerd says, I don't really, um, I don't have an a priori how they should be. Any other questions? Gentleman here. Oh, yep. <coughs> Um, Mr. Steidl, I have a question for you. Um, would it be interesting for you actually to uh, um, publish a book that is based on, on sources found in the internet, say blog articles or anonymous photographs? Yes, uh, could be. Uh, you, you know, actually, uh, I, I have uh, done such a book project or something similar. Um, uh, Joel Sternfeld was... Uh, taking part at a UN climate conference in New York. And he was taking photos from, uh, uh, from uh, the, 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 the people sitting there and from the, from the politicians, uh, portraits. And uh, you can, when you look into the, f into the photos and into the faces of this person, you can see they know something uh, what you don't know, mm -hmm. because they have information and uh, they are ahead time, and uh, it is. Uh, but 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 you get really pain in your heart when you when you look into these faces. And then uh, he did a research. Um, he, he was just curious to find out when there were the first informations about climate change in the internet. Yeah? And with some students, they were looking into the internet, they were loading uh, down uh, old tapes and records uh, from New York uh, Public Library. There was not, uh, not much, but really they found something uh, which was uh, approximately uh, 10 years ago. And uh, the the first recordings of information that somebody, a scientist in, 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 uh, in the Arctic, uh, was typing something, th that was not really good to read. It, it was more like a sound in the internet. And he found with his students a visual form to transmit. So there is in the book, it begins with letters and, and parts of words and sentences, most of the pages are empty, and then it is getting more and more dense. And at the end of the book, you have the real information what happens today. And this information from the noise of the internet about climate change and uh, the photos of the, uh, of the faces of uh, people taking part in this climate conference is an amazing mm. book, and uh, um, this information, what the book delivers, can be only done analog, because you have to read it on paper, you have to see the white page, yeah, page um, and uh, you have to compare it with, with, uh, with the, the photographs uh, of these people. And uh, that's, you know, that's something which can only happen in a book and in analog. But the resources are digital. So I think we're coming to the end of this conversation. Um, one last question. Do you see yourself doing this for the next 20 years, 30 years? Do you, do you see yourself finding new, both of, both of you, but, more, but first for Gerhard, do you, would you like to be a discoverer of new talents? Because everybody you work with are mainly kind of leading names in culture. But would you like to, you talk about how you want the future generation to look after Steidl, but do you not also equally want to find the future generation who will be the leading icons, as opposed to working with Karl Lagerfeld, who are already great masters? Do you want to discover, I mean, how do you find a new talent who you think does, you know, has the vision? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not waking up in the morning and... Uh Looking for new talents, uh, you know. That you, you but why not? Why not? Because I, you see, they all I were, come to him anyway. Because if I were yeah. you, I'd be. Because I've, you know, I've, if I were you, I'd have wor I've worked with Carl. I've worked with all these people. But I would be curious for the new Carl, 
Because Carl will be gone very soon. Who's the new Carl? No. I mean, when Carl is gone, you know. He's 70, I don't know. But who are, you know, anyway, that's just me. But don't mm. you want to sometimes wake up thinking, my God, who, who's the next riveting Robert Maplethorpe? Because I haven't seen anybody as high caliber as Robert's work since Robert left in terms of the work he was doing. No, it's very simple. This is not a question which is relevant for me. I'm doing my work. Uh, I enjoy my work and the collaborations with an artist, and uh, I love the results. And uh, future m m might decide if this is really. But you a don't feel you have a responsibility no. to find the no, no future not at voices. All. No. no. What about you, Rod? Do you like to go out and look at photographers who you think? has particular talent similar to yours, who are very, very young, and I'm more kind of selfish, you know, like, mm. um, I just want to keep on doing my work. Uh, no, I'm just saying, you know, like, there's lots of photographers out there that are great too, don't worry, they'll, they'll make themselves be known. Um, and and to, if I could answer the question for Garrett, all the great ones go to him anyway, he doesn't have to go search. Okay, uh, me, I'm 61. I like to keep yeah, 30 years. I, I don't know if I can, uh, I need more assistance now because I use bigger cameras. You know, I'm going counter uh, uh, the, what, uh, current. Um, uh, you know, like once you get a certain age, you know what you, what you do best. And it's stupid to stop. Okay, I, you know, I, I'm never, I'm sorry. I already took my retirement in my 20s when I was one of those hippies, you know. I took, I was high 10 years. I took, I did my retirement already. <laughs> I, I, this is my working age. Gerhard Steidel, Robert Polidori. Okay. Thank you.